All right. Um, what I want to go over is filling out this template that I um, put up for you just to kind of help you organize your note sheet for whenever you're doing a panic or a phantoms problem. Um, so at the top I have all the different names of um, the tests or the intervals that we've learned about. One sample T, two sample T, one proportion Z, two proportion Z, or matched pairs T. Um, and so we're going to go through what the parameter of interest would be, how we would structure the hypotheses, the formula for the test statistics, the formula for the confidence intervals, and then um, I'll show you the um, other part to this as well. Um, so I think let's start, well, we'll just start from the top. That's fine. Um, so the parameter of interest when you're talking about a one sample um, that means we're talking about a mean. So we would say something like, I'm interested in the true mean, the true population mean. And that would be mu. Um, when we write our hypotheses, the null hypothesis is that mu is going to equal some claim, so that'll be some number. And then the alternative will be that mu is either less than some number or more than some number or not equal to some number. Um, the test statistic is a T test statistic, and um, it'll be X bar minus the mu. So this will be what you got in your sample. This will be related to the null hypothesis um, over the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So that's your formula. Um, make sure that you have your degree of freedom. And your degree of freedom will be the sample size minus 1. Um, for a confidence interval, your formula, you're going to take your test statistic, which is your sample mean, plus or minus, T star, times your standard deviation divided by the square root of your sample size. Um, and again, the degree of freedom you would want to write down. That's whatever your sample size is, minus one. You might also want to indicate that um, all of the stuff that comes after the plus or minus, so all of this stuff right here is your margin of error, ME. Um, standard error would just be the standard deviation portion, so the stuff in the parentheses would be the standard error. Um, okay, so for matched pairs, you do it in your calculator the same way, um, well, you do a t-test in your calculator the same way, but um, you would be dealing with the, the third list. So like you would be given a list of, of um, like maybe before and after scores, let's say, and um, you would find the list of the differences and then you would refer to that third list the whole rest of the problem. And the idea is that we would be interested in the true mean difference Um, so it's only it's only one mean that we're interested in, but it's the mean of the differences. When you write your null hypothesis, um, your null would be that um, uh, the mu, and then you would have some sort of subscript, like maybe a minus b, let's say, something minus something, the difference. Um, the null would be that that difference is zero. There's no difference. 
And then the alternative would be that the mean of those differences is less than or greater than or not equal to something. Um, uh, there should be a zero here. So if the differences are less than zero, then that would mean that A is a smaller number and B is a bigger number. If the differences are greater than zero, that means that A is a bigger number and B is a smaller number. Um, the formula is the same. Um, I think you could write it in if you want, but it's the exact same formula as that stuff right in there. Um, and the confidence interval is also the same as what we wrote in that last box. Um, when you're doing a two sample T, you are interested in the true difference in means or difference of means, however you want to say that. But just make sure that you're indicating that it's plural, that there's more than one mean. There's two means. Um, make sure that you are indicating what you're subtracting. So if you have um, like a mu1 minus mu2, make sure that you indicate what the 1 represents and what the 2 represents. So, you know, like, let's say it was public schools versus private schools. You'd have to assign which one is one and which one is two. Um, the null hypothesis would be that there's no difference. So one way to say that would be that mu1 equals mu2. Or you could say um, mu1 minus mu2 equals zero. Um, and then the alternative would be that mu1 is either less than or greater than or not equal to mu2. And it would be the same idea here with like the pink version. Mu1 minus mu2 might be less than or greater than or not equal to zero. Um, the formula is an adapted version of this other T um, test statistic. When you're doing a test statistic, oh, maybe you also want to write down that um, this would be for phantoms. This um, row would be for phantoms. And then confidence intervals would be for panic, if that helps you that this row right here would be dealing with a panic problem. So if you're doing a phantoms problem and you're finding a t-test statistic, now you have two different um, sample means. So you're finding the difference in those divided by, and then we're going to have our standard deviation stuff. So you're going to take the first standard deviation squared divided by the first sample size plus the second standard deviation squared divided by the second sample size. Um, and then you're going to get your degree of freedom from the calculator. And that'll be the same when you do your confidence interval. The confidence interval would be just like there was an X bar now there's going to be x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus or minus and just like we had a t star we're going to have a t star again um, and then for our standard deviation portion it's going to be the same as what was in the denominator here so it'll be a big square root s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2. 
So again, the margin of error is everything that comes after the plus or minus sign. So all of this right here would be the margin of error. Um, and again, get your degree of freedom from your calculator. Um, uh, you're going to also need to get your T star from your calculator. Um, just leave this as a T star when you're writing the formula. Um, it, that's different. If it was a one sample T, you can get the T star off of your T chart. So look on your T chart. Um, the reason that we can't really use our T chart for when it's a two sample is because you will likely have two different sample sizes and so you'd have two completely different degrees of freedom and it just gets messy. So just leave it as a T star. Um, get your degree of freedom from your calculator um, and you, you'll be fine. You can get the whole rest of the interval off of your calculator. Um, okay, one proportion, Z, um, you are interested in the true population proportion. I'm just abbreviating population as pop. Um, and that would be a P. The symbol would be a P. The, I'm going to break that up. Um, the null hypothesis would be that P equals something. So the proportion of people who like um, blue M&Ms the most is, let's say, 70% or something. This would be a 0.70. The alternative would be that P is less than that or greater than that or not equal to that. Um, now you're going to have a Z test statistic. So one proportion Z. So a Z test statistic. You're going to take your sample proportion, which is P hat, minus P O, and P O comes from the null hypothesis, divided by the square root of PO times 1 minus PO over N. And that square root is over all of that stuff. Um, make sure you're using PO. PO comes from the null hypothesis. When you do a confidence interval, just like here when there was an, um, an X bar, now there's going to be a P hat, plus or minus. It used to be a T star, now it's a Z star. And then your standard deviation formula will be P hat times 1 minus P hat over N. And I want to point out, maybe I'll try to highlight this, um, when it's a phantoms problem, you're using POs, but when it's an interval, you're using P hats. So that is something to make a note of and be careful of. Um, for a two proportion Z, now you're interested in the true difference um, of the proportions. So make sure it's plural because you've got two of them. Um, make sure you're indicating what you're subtracting from what, and make sure that you're indicating, you know, what is designated as a one and what is designated as a two. So, like, if we're talking about proportion of men versus women, make sure that you indicate which, you know, does the one represent men or women? Does the two represent men or women? The null hypothesis, you can structure a couple different ways. One way would be to say that P1 equals P2. Another way to say it would be that P1 minus P2 equals 0. So again, just conveying that there's no difference. The alternative, one way to write that would be P1 is greater than or less than or not equal to P2. Or you could write it as P1 minus P2 is greater than 0 or less than 0 or not equal to 0.
Um, okay, moving on to the formula. Um, when you're doing a two proportion Z, you need to find the um, P hat combined first. And that's where you take your X1 plus your X2 divided by N1 plus N2. Um, remember, like, when you find your P hat 1, that's X1 over N1. And P hat 2 would be X2 over N2. So when you're finding the combined, you're just adding the tops and you're adding the bottoms and you're dividing. Um, now your Z test statistic will be P1 hat minus P2 hat, um, yeah, minus P2 hat over, and then it'll be the square root of P combined hat times one minus P combined times one over N1 plus one over N2. Sorry, my page, my writing is getting a little cramped there. Um, and then your um, confidence interval, just like here when it was a two sample, we had um, our two sample means the difference in them. Here we're going to have the difference in our two sample proportions. So P1 hat minus P2 hat plus or minus Z star. And then our big square root formula, which would be P1 hat times 1 minus P1 hat over N1 plus P2 hat times 1 minus P2 hat over N2. Um, now, all of these formulas are in all of your notes. Um, but I think just kind of having it all on one page is going to make everything a little bit more efficient for you. Um, if you have a panic or a phantom problem on the AP test, um, I just don't see any reason why you wouldn't get the formula correct because you have them all right here. Um, but make sure that you write the formula out make sure that you write in the numbers the values so write in what x bar is write in what mu is write in the standard deviation and the sample size make sure you say what degree of freedom is but then the rest of the problem i would just do on my calculator to get the actual value of the t or the z test statistic um, and the p value or the interval itself you know the calculator will tell you the p diff and the margin of error. I forgot to highlight the margin of error, but here would be the margin of error for this problem. Here would be the margin of error for this one. Um, so the calculator will give you the P diff and the margin of error. So you just put that plus or minus the margin of error, or it'll give you X diff plus or minus, and then you put the margin of error. And then it'll either, it'll also give you the, the C lower, and it'll give you the C upper, and then you'll be able to write your actual interval. Um, okay, then the only other thing I wanted to point out to you, and I think I'm gonna have to erase all that, um, is if you scroll down, here I have all of the conditions. So here's how you write out your conditions if it's a one sample and if it's a match pairs. If it's a two sample, um, you have to check for both samples. Otherwise, it's sort of the same as what was up here. Um, one proportion. Um, if, if you're doing an interval, make sure you're talking about P hat. And if you're doing a test, make sure you use P O. And what that's referring to is um, when you're checking this condition right here, if it's a, if it's a panic problem, a confidence interval problem, you're going to be using P hat, just like I have written here. But if it's a test, a significance test, a phantoms, it would be N 
times PO greater than or equal to 10, and N times 1 minus PO greater than or equal to 10. Um, and the PO comes from the null hypothesis. Um, if it's a two proportion, then you have to check for both groups. Um, and then you would be using P, um, the P combined, but I need to scroll down. There's more to it. There we go. So the P combined, but you have to check it with both sample sizes. Um, and then, oh, then I have the, the general form of the conclusion here. So, um, hopefully you printed this page out and filled it in. Um, I have that posted on our PowerSchool page. Um, yeah, and so all we're doing today for homework is just six questions, I believe, of just identifying what kind of a test or what kind of an interval you're dealing with, but not actually doing the full problems. Just um, trying to figure out, because I know that was one spot that you guys said was difficult, just trying to figure out what kind of a test or interval it is. So um, give that a try, and then um, eventually I'll make a video going over them too. All right, have a good day.